When Stephen Rawson asked for advice on the fit of his brand new helmet on Facebook, he got plenty of replies, but some of them were downright dangerous. I could see he'd put a lot of effort into trying to make the right choice and was disappointed that his new shark just didn't feel right. But he bought it from a UK dealer, so I pointed out that he could easily get it sorted by the distributor. There were no favours done or strings pulled. This is what happens when you buy from a reputable store. All I did was follow the story. I'm glad I spotted his post, but did you know that Bike Social members can ask us for advice at any time using the link at bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join and you'll find it in the article section. If we don't have the answer, we'll know someone who does. Now, let's see how Stephen got the perfect fit for his motorcycle lid. originally I, i've tried on so many helmets yeah so many helmets and i'd, I'd ordered from sports bike shop and then returned them when i tried them on at home so yeah. i actually can't remember whether this one came from the store or from their their mail order service uh, so i remember you saying you've done loads of research into it haven't you which is why you were so disappointed when you uh, when it started causing you problems i tried on tens of helmets and, and it was just a nightmare so when yeah. i got the shark and it seemed to fit. It fit in the store. I tried it on for a good, you know, 15 minutes in store. Yeah. Felt fine. Felt tight, but you know, it's a new helmet, supposed to be snug. Yeah. And then I got it home, and I tried it on at home again, and I sat sat watching the telly like you do, make sure it fits before you peel yeah. off the visor sticker, and yeah, and it felt okay. And it was only when I actually went for a ride on it, and after about an hour, I'm thinking, oh, my, my ears are really hurting. Oh, no. And it was just getting worse and worse and worse, and and while the helmet seemed to fit my head, it yeah. is just yeah. ever so slightly, we just were pressing inside the lid. Yeah. And the pain was just unbearable. And I thought, oh, I, can't, I can't believe this. After all this effort and time and yeah. messing about getting helmets and taking them back, and I thought, this, this one's unusable. I'm not, after all this, I'm just not going to be able to use it. Yeah. So, so out of desperation, really, I rang Sports Bike Shop because I was aware that some manufacturers can provide different sized yeah. uh, internals for it, different cheap parts, that kind of thing. So I rang them up and I spoke to a really nice customer service guy. He was he was super helpful. Cool. He says, I'm, I'm just struggling with this. What what can I do? And, and that's when he he says, well, we'll contact, contact Nevis, the importer, and, and we'll see what can be done about it. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, uh, he put me in touch with with the chap, the helmet technician, uh, the yeah. shark technician at Nevis, and uh, sent some photographs of my head, and 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 we spoke for quite a while about what I thought might be the issues, whether it be the the EPS lining, yeah, or the padding, or or whatever. And he went away. Well, I sent the helmet off, uh, all free of charge, by the way. Sports bike shop did all that free of charge for me, and uh, and. They made their modification, sent it back, and, and thankfully, after yeah. all that, it, it seems to be okay. I'm Aaron. I work for Nimbus Marketing. I'm the customer service manager, and I look after all after sales for Shark within the UK. Sometimes emails on the phone just doesn't have the same sort of level of service you can offer being there in person. Yeah. Uh, today's technology gives us the ability to be able to be there, see exactly what they're doing and giving them that support as if you're next to them. Give them the little tips, oh no, just move your hand slightly to the left and allowing them to do it themselves at home rather than have to yeah. send it back to the store or go back into a store to get it fixed. So talk us through what happened. So I got a phone call from Sports Bike Shop uh, asking for advice. All they knew at the time was, you know, a customer brought a helmet, thought it fitted, after a few hours it wasn't quite fitting, which comes up not often, but more than you would expect. Uh, again, a standard phone call, you know, what can we offer, what can we do? Uh, you know, talking through them, based on the knowledge I had, I was like, you know, try and find out a little bit more, and then we can get it back, we can have a look at it, we can do minor modifications to, you know, see what can be done. He was just, you know, he was just ringing up, trying to work out how we can make it better. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, it's a simple cheap, uh, cheap pad change. 
change the cheek pads, and it will just change the fit and how it's sitting on your head when you're riding down the road. On this one, we needed to get it back because it, you know, it was hurting his ears, and it wasn't tight anywhere else. It was just around the ears, so yeah. it was something that needs. So it was to be right everywhere. Yes, yeah, it was just there. on the ears. They weren't yeah. quite right. Ideally, it would be done in store, looking at him, looking at the head shape, looking where it sits on his face. Yeah. Um, so we got him to send a load of photos. He did a real detailed report on where it's hurting and okay. had photos with arrows and pointing it, which is a lot easier to work on rather than hoping for the best, yeah. uh, which unless you're in front of the person, it's quite hard to get the ideal fit. Um, so with all of that, you know, we got it back and it was easier for me to work out what needs to be changed. So we got the helmet back, took it all apart, looked at his photos that he took and where he was saying it was hurting, and then looked at the helmet, and then I trimmed uh, the harder plastic on the back of the cheek pads back, oh. just to allow it to sit slightly further in, yeah. uh, in case it is, you know, we're catching on that. Uh, again, doesn't normally need to be done because yeah. there is padding all the way around, but on this case, it did need to just be trimmed right yep. back down. And I molded the ear EPS. So where the EPS cutout is for the speakers, I've yep. just molded that off and just smoothed it yep. and just kind of smoothed it back in okay. to allow a more of a rounder profile and just giving a little bit more space next to where it is, where we're going. Yeah. So what did this cost, Mr. Rawson? So this didn't cost the customer anything. Normally we'd cover the cost of the carriage, yeah. uh, but with Sports Bike Shop, where we do a lot of business, constantly sending stuff back to us, sending stuff out to them, yeah. it was just put in on okay, their delivery cool. as normal, so there was no real carriage charge. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't charge Sports Bike Shop anything. Now, we, we showed, while we've been talking, some of the video you kindly shot of you doing that work. And I think we should stress, this isn't you demonstrating how somebody can do this. He posted on a Facebook group about having issues with this, with, with his yes. helmet. And he was given advice, such <laughs> as, I'll read some of these off, using silicon to lubricate the ear openings, pressing it in with a hot spoon, pumping up a football inside, then leaving it for several days, and even cutting sections of the polystyrene liner out with a knife. <laughs> um, should people try to customise their own fit? No, not at all. Uh, so the video was not a how-to idiot's guide. Uh, it was just showing the work that is involved yeah. uh, in doing a custom fit and allowing a better fit and a more enjoyable ride for the rider, not a, this is how you do it yourself. Yeah. A little bit of knowledge is always dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> you've heard something once from someone, you've seen me do it on the helmet and you think you know what you're doing. Yeah. There's always a reason why you do something in a way you do it. Yeah. And that changes on different helmets, on different models, on different brands. There's always a difference that you do a certain thing for. Yeah. Never cut the EPS out, yeah. ever. It's designed to absorb the impact. It's designed to absorb the energy and disperse the energy. Yeah. In certain areas, you know, most helmets nowadays have multi-density EPS, yeah. and that's designed to allow a better transfer of the energy around the helmet. If you start chopping parts out, yeah. you are going to affect how that energy can transfer around the helmet, yeah. which is the complete opposite of what you want. Never use anything hot on the EPS because that will just crumble yeah. it and then it will not do its job. Never play around with your own helmet. Uh, a slight moulding, a slight pushing of the EPS is generally okay, but get an expert to do it. You've got yeah. that UK support. You've got someone at the end of the phone. You've got someone that you can go and to talk to and understand what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, you're buying online. If you're buying from abroad, it may be cheaper, but if anything goes wrong, try and have a conversation with someone in Italian or French yeah. is not ideal. Whenever you're trying on a helmet for the first time, you want it to feel snug. Yeah. You don't want it to feel tight in any places, but overall you want a nice, firm fit but never go for a comfort straight away yeah. does it fit does it hurt anywhere no right at that point you can ask someone can you make sure it fits and they can ensure your eyes are sitting in the right place your forehead sitting in the right place because uh, eyes are generally the biggest telltale sign if it's sitting too low down it can cause pressure along the top of your forehead yeah. where it's being pushed in or reverse effect if it's moving around too much once it's bedded in it's going to be dropping down loads and it won't do its job on the ground.
Hi, I'm Ash and I'm the retail manager here at Sports Bike Shop headquarters in Curtin, Lincolnshire. So the story of Stephen, what a great story. You know, he comes in, he buys a helmet. Although it's the correct size, it, it just didn't fit quite perfectly. So, you know, we, we've got a very good relationship with Nevis, the UK distributors for Shark Helmets. They said send it back and uh, they made some alterations to the helmet. They then sent it straight back to the customer and uh, the customer was really happy with it. So we, we actually looked at the, the history of Stephen's order and uh, he took full advantage of our 365 days returns policy. So he had a couple of X lights, he had a HJC helmet amongst I think one or two others as well. Uh, he returned them because he wasn't happy. He ended up with this uh, shark helmet and after using it a few times, he just started to feel a few aches, a few pains. And that's when he got in contact with our customer services team. So yeah, most of the, the premium brands, particularly uh, with the helmet manufacturers, offer some sort of uh, support, whether it be the race departments, the race team trucks. Uh, so it, it's, it's a service they offer, you know. When, when you go into a store, we, interiors can be changed in helmets, you know, skull caps can be changed, cheat pads, but that only changes the, the overall dimensions of the helmet. These race trucks and the, the distributors have a few tricks kind of under the counter that they can, they can change that, you know, maybe not retail staff of a store can do. Uh, so it was something that we thought was great, uh, but in all honesty, it's not abnormal. You know, Sports Bike Shop ourselves, we've built this reputation on this kind of service. And we'd like to think that any reputable brand offers the same kind of service. It doesn't stop with the sale with us. You know, you, you get that continued support when you buy from a, a reputable brand, whether it be in store in one of the stores across the UK, or online. You could buy online, bring that helmet to a store. So I bought this helmet, I don't know whether it's quite right. We'll put it on your head and we'll, we'll give you a few pointers. You know, it's, it's not about getting your money then stopping. It's about that continued service, that after sales care that makes sure you're happy with the purchase that you've got. And that's something you're really only gonna get when you buy from within the UK from your rectal uh, retailer. <laughs>
You know, I've, there's one image that sticks in my mind and it will forever is a picture of Jorge Lorenzo uh, sat in on his seat in the, in the garage and you can see the roll of skin kind of sticking up above the helmet. A little bit different for road riding. Uh, GP racers traveling a lot faster, it needs to be like a little bit tighter, but it's the same kind of concept. So there isn't much of a roll of skin here. Uh, so my first indication is that this helmet is slightly big. Now what we can do is we can see the movement inside the helmet. Your head should be in contact with the whole interior. What a lot of people do is grab hold of this chin bar and start wrenching the helmet around. You've got big muscles in your arms and shoulders that will allow you to do that. Even if it is too small, believe it or not, you will be able to make that helmet move. So what I want you to do is just put the heel of your hand where your ears would be for me. You're going to hold the helmet still and I want you to try and turn your head inside the helmet. And the only movement you should have really is the fat in your cheeks and we can see there that his whole head is moving inside the helmet. So this is definitely too big. Okay, and if we open and close our mouth slightly, you should slightly nip the inside of your cheeks between your teeth. Because when that helmet's, so it's not doing it at all. No, so when that helmet's bedded in, if it was doing that, that will become less and less over time and it will become more comfortable. It doesn't take long to bed a helmet in. If you're riding the bike in ambient temperatures, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees, if you're lucky in the UK, uh, it will take a lot longer to bed in. Stick it on in, in your house, you know, leave this visor film on. We have a 365 day returns policy. If that's left on and you haven't worn it, you've got a whole year to return it to us. No problems. The moment you've taken that off, we start, you know, we start having to think about that next person. Has it been worn? Leave it on your head. If you instantly feel that there's a, a pressure point, it's probably the wrong shape or the wrong size for you, leave it on for five, 10 minutes. Get a bit of warmth in it. You'll soon, what initially felt quite tight, will suddenly start feeling quite normal. And that's what we want. We want a nice, even pressure all around the inside and your head in total contact with that helmet. So where should I go from this one? Go size down? I'm, I'm going to guess it maybe two sizes down. Okay, so we can, see, we can see how it was a little bit of a struggle to get over the crown of your head. Remember, the crown of your head is bigger than your jawline. So it should almost drop into place because the helmet follows the shape of your head. So it's bigger here than it is here which is why you need to get it over the crown of your head then it drops into place. So instantly we can see the roller skin is, is more prominent. A little bit of hamster cheek going on. And again, side of the helmet, move your head for me. There's still a little bit of movement, but considerably less. And open and close your mouth. Yeah, bite your cheeks a bit more. And you feel like a nice even pressure all around your head. But you can't say it's tight here, it's tight there. It's just a nice even pressure. Yeah, I'll say we're about bang on the money.